right, guys, you're looking at the East River right across from Manhattan. If you look right over there, oops. If you look right over there, you see the Empire State Building. Now we are in an area of Queens called Long Island City. Well, why are we here? Well, today we're doing a little Westies video. Early Westies, early Jimmy Coonan Westies, to be specific. And uh, we're doing a couple locations today. It's only about 10 degrees and I'm right by the East River, so I'm doing just fine. <laughs> Holy crap. All right, so right now we're going to the spot where in 1966, March 24th, Bobby Lagville was shot down by Jimmy Coonan, Jackie Coonan, and Eddie Sullivan. Whew. Now, why did this happen? Well, Lagville, he was like an ex-con. You know, he got in trouble with robberies and doing all types of stuff. Wasn't necessarily a good dude by any means. Let's get one more view of the skyline from here. All right. Long Island City, this area used to be pretty industrial. Some parts of it still kind of are, but you see these high rises going up. It's kind of got its own skyline at this point. And uh, I don't really come here too often. It's a little congested and type of people that live around here ain't my type so so lagville now they had got word that lagville was potentially being contracted out by mickey spillane now this is the early years of the conan spillane wars we're talking about 66 this is a little after spillane for anyone who knows the story kidnaps uh conan's father pistol whips him extorts him and then this is something that Fester's inside Jimmy and Jackie and these guys for a long year, for a very long time, and they want to get back at this guy. So they're hearing that Spillane is going to get Lagville to take out Eddie Sullivan. Now, Eddie Sullivan was not a Hell's Kitchen guy, but he hung out around there a lot. And uh, it was even reported that Mickey Spillane and Spillane's brother actually had beat the crap out of uh, Sullivan at one point in a bar. So, we weren't big fans of him. And, you know, just like Jimmy, Sullivan had this thing inside of him that he wanted to get Mickey back for that. So, it was all this stuff going on. Now, apparently, Spillane was going to get Lagville to kill Sullivan. Now, this gets back to Jimmy and gets back to Jackie Coonan and Eddie Sullivan. So they call Lagville to this meeting. They want to meet him and Lagville agrees. Now before that, Lagville goes into a bar by the name of Pearlie's over there in Manhattan. And he speaks to a neighborhood guy by the name of Julius Dutch Grote. Now Julius, like I said, was a neighborhood guy. He was familiar with everyone. He was friends with Spillane. He was friendly with Cooney. He was kind of a guy that was trying to just stay down the middle. Didn't really want much trouble. Neighborhood dude from Hell's Kitchen. Uh, he was actually present with Spillane when actually, if you know the story of Jimmy Coon and shooting a machine gun down from a rooftop at Spillane and his guys as they're on their way to like a card game or something. So, Lagville goes in there and he tells... Uh, Dutch Groat, you know, oh, I gotta go meet these guys. They wanna go meet me. And then Dutch goes, uh, you sure that's a good idea, dude? And Bobby Lagville says, you know, what am I gonna do? I gotta go. So, Eddie Sullivan, who was in his 30s at this time, and Jimmy's only about 19, and Jackie Coonan, I believe, is only a few years older than Jimmy Coonan. So kind of a Ragtag, strange group of guys. So they pick up Lagville and they bring him over here to LIC. In 
the shadow of the Empire State Building, just across the East River. And they bring him right here to 4738 Fifth Street, which is now this Dwayne Reed Pharmacy right here. Now, as I said, a lot of this area has changed. It used to be very industrial. So, right here on this block here, in front of this address. Now we're gonna walk across the street. Right now, this is like a right, uh, Dwayne Reed. And then there's a parking lot and then we can't see it, but above that are apartments. So they took him on this block here, which is very industrial at the time. And it would have been very dark and probably kind of creepy. I mean, even like if you go back just like 15 years ago or 20 years ago, this neighborhood was still pretty industrial. Some parts still are. So let's go across the street and talk more about this. So just to recap, they're picking up Lagville because they think that Spillane has hired him to kill Eddie Sullivan. And Coonan, who knew Lagville, they were friendly, thinks that he has turned and went to Spillane's side. So they pull him over here where this Dwayne Reed is on 5th Street. Now they get out and they start talking. Obviously they're calling him a rat or whatever. They're telling him he's on Spillane's side. And Lagville goes, you're gonna shoot me, just shoot me then. So that's exactly what they do. They, they fill them full of uh, seven bullets right here on this spot right here. And apparently Jackie Coonan takes the pleasure in riding over him a bunch of times with his car after they shoot him. Now they would get off on this one even though they were suspects. But um, somewhere along the lines, he told Featherstone this story. Featherstone was not in the picture at that point. You know, he was uh, he was a Hell's Kitchen guy, but he wasn't, you know, with Conan and them at that point. But somewhere along the lines, he must have told Featherstone this story because Featherstone recounts it in court. When he goes witness, he says that they drove uh, Lagville here. They were the ones that did it and they shot him and... You know, Jackie ran over him with the car and the whole, even the conversation about, you know, Lagville saying, you know, just shoot me. That's coming from Featherstone hearsay, you know, secondhand account from Coonan. So around 4.20 a.m. on the 24th is when they find the bullet riddled body of Bobby Lagville right here in Long Island City. And everything you're seeing was not here at that time. This was just a wasteland with Manhattan skyline looking over it. See that big building over there. You can get rent over there. It's pretty good. It's only like probably six or seven thousand dollars a month. <laughs> All right, so this is the first location Westies come to Queens. Doing some early Westies history today. Early Coonan Westies history. I say Coonan Westies because you got to delineate, you know, because the Westies is kind of just a general term for these. West Side gangs that was given to them. Even Spillane would be considered a Westie, you know? As far as I know. Look up there at those buildings over there. All right. So, you know, very site specific over here. We're just coming to look at the spot where March 24th, Bobby Lagville is gunned down by Eddie Sullivan, Jimmy Coonan, and Jackie Coonan, right in front of this spot where this Dwayne Reed is right now. Now, about two weeks after that, they would make their way back to Long Island City to handle some more business. You know, 
I could see why they would come back and why they would use this area, you know, in general. Because there wasn't much going on at that time here. There you see an old building still here amongst the garbage that they put up in this area. The characterless glass garbage that they're building up in this neighborhood. At least that's how I feel. So let's get out of here. We're gonna go to another spot in Long Island City. We're a couple weeks later. Coonan makes his way back to handle some more business. One more look where Bobby Lagville was shot down. Now in the Westies book, it says the 23rd. Um, in the articles, I'm getting the date of the 24th when this happened. Now this could be that on, it happened on the night of the 23rd. It may be 4.20 a.m. on the 24th. They had found Lagville. Either way, you know, it was at, uh, you know, one of those days, one of those times. So let's get out of here. I hope this video was clear. I've been a little all over the place, I think, but. I think it was all right. On to the next. All right, everybody. Still in Long Island City. You're about a couple miles away from where we were before. All right. We are next to Calvary Cemetery. Now, if you guys ever seen like movies where it's like in a cemetery that's like overlooking Manhattan, I mean, there's a bunch of movies this would be that cemetery. Or if you're on the, what is that? The BQE, I believe. I think when you, when you look down, you see a cemetery. Calvary. Now, this is another spot where they came a couple weeks later to take care of some more business. Down over here, this way on 37th Street. You can see the Manhattan skyline in the distance. You could actually see One World Trade. Right there, former location of the Twin Towers. So let's hang out here for a little bit. Let's talk more early Westie stuff. So about a couple of weeks later on April 3rd, 1966, these guys are paranoid. Here's the Spillane Coonan Wars, early years still going on. Now then hearing these rumors that Spillane's got a couple of hitmen coming from Texas, coming from the West Coast to uh, take them out. So that night, there's two men. Now, if you've read the Westies, I mean, you know these stories. This happens within the first few chapters. But what we do here is we tell the stories for people that don't know them. And if you do know them, hey, it's cool to see the spot where this shit went down. So a 25-year-old man by the name of Charles Cannelstein, he meets up with another man by the name of Jerry Morales, age 40. Now, at that time, Jerry Morales was, in fact, from the West Coast. He was using a alias by the name of John Bucola. So Jerry Morales was using an alias by the name of John Bucola. That's what he was going by. So they meet up at a place called the Luxor Baths in Midtown Manhattan over there. And it's like a steam room, you know, kind of one of them spa type places. Eventually they get to talking and uh, they, they decide to hang out during the night. They get some food. 
Then they end up at the Pussycat Lounge in Midtown Manhattan, not far from like the Times Square area over there. And it's inside that lounge that Eddie Sullivan comes in there and he sees these guys. And I guess the paranoia is really high. So he goes up to uh, them and he starts questioning them about, you know, you're sitting on my stool. You guys are talking to this girl I know. I mean, he's just making up this story. He doesn't know the girl. Obviously, it's not his stool. So eventually he comes back and he's got Coonan. Now, they pretend to be cops, right? Now, the four guys that are there are uh, Eddie Sullivan, Jimmy Coonan, William Murtha or Billy Murtha, and... James Gallagher. So Billy Murtha, James Gallagher, Jimmy Coonan, and Eddie Sullivan, they pretend to be cops. So they basically get these guys into a car. They get Jerry Morales, Charles Callistein into a car. Now, at this point, you know, they think, oh, maybe these guys can be a hitman. But if they're not, maybe we can get something out of them. So... They try to get a couple of grand out of them. You know, they say, you know, if you guys got a couple of grand on you, you know, you can take care of this. This is going to be over with, you know. Obviously, they didn't have that money on them. So they end up driving these guys back here to Long Island City in the shadows of the skyline of Manhattan. Looking down on them. Once again, this area, this particular area of Long Island City hasn't changed that much. We're going to go look... Um, up the block here. We're going to go to the address of 5318 37th Street to see where this all went down. So when they get here, they get these guys out of the car. And it's weird because once again, you have a case where apparently Jerry Morales goes, you're going to shoot me? Go ahead, shoot me right here. Kind of like what Robert Lagville kind of did. Like these guys are just like, yeah, I don't know if they're like they don't think that they're actually going to get shot. So they just start talking shit. They're like, yeah, we, yeah, go ahead, do it, do it. You know? So, Jerry Morales, in fact, ends up getting shot by these guys. Charles Canestine goes, fuck this. He starts running. But it's too late. He gets shot up. And he falls to the floor. He gets shot in the arm. He gets shot up in the armpit. He's all shot up. So this all happens right up the block here. In front of the address of 5318 37th Street. Where these guys are getting shot and they get slumped over right up the block down here. Now why do we know 5318 37th Street? Well, in the newspapers after that, they report... Now listen to this. Listen how screwed up this is. They give the guy's name, James Kilmarchik. Who lives at 5318 37th Street. They actually give the guy's name and his address. He says he looks out the window... And he sees the body slumped over and um, a maroon sedan pulls off. So that dress is going to be right up the street now. The home where that was, I'm going to put up some pictures when I get over there. It's now an empty lot. Now, there's a lot of empty lots here where we're about to go. But in some of the old photos, I found that there was a bunch of houses where these lots were. Now, in the Westies book... It says that they drove them to a lot across the street from the cemetery. I don't know. I don't know if there was a lot there. I don't know. It could have been against. So when we get down there, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you these cemetery walls here, like this cobble right here. To me, it sounds like this guy uh, that lived in this apartment looked out his window and saw this happening. So unless he had a side window looking over into a empty lot, you know. It could be that the lot they're referring to is like where these cars are parked against the wall. I, what I'm saying is I don't know if there was a lot. You know, a lot of these times these things get said and they're not exactly true. You know, not that the events aren't true, but maybe some of the specifics as far as like the exact locations or whether these properties were actually what they were. But they bring Charles Canelstein, Jerry Morales here. And, you know, whether by the time they got here, they actually thought these guys were hitmen, who knows? But they decide they're going to cap them anyway. And for you Westies people, I mean, you guys, you guys know this story. Early, early 60s history here. About 1966, early Westies history. So let's go down here. 
Now we're gonna see a supply store right here, um, which has been here for a very long time because I looked up uh, 80s NYC when I saw that this place was here. I think it's called JNS, if I'm not mistaken. JNS Supply. <sighs> All right. 37th Street. So we're going to be going down to the next block here to see where these guys came on April 3rd, 66, back to Long Island City. All right, so JNS Supply. This place has been here for a very long time. I had some pictures of it from 80s.nyc, trying to get a kind of a feel of what the area would have looked like. Even though this happened in the 60s, you know, from the 60s to the 80s, not that much change in these areas. It's not like now. Okay. And you see the cemetery. It's still right there. All right. So. So this guy lived at 5318 37th Street. Which is gonna be where this empty lots here are. That's where those homes used to be. There used to be like apartments right here. Where these lots are. And I'm gonna show you some pictures of the block. This building here has been here for a while. So let's go look, let's see, let's get an address on this building here. So that's 5332. show the buildings too that were here all right so right here where these lots are would have been where 5318 was right here so the guy would have looked out his window and seen the body slumped over now once again I don't know if these lots are here it doesn't make sense because there was apartments here there was houses here so let's say the guy's here at 5318 looking out his window. Sorry. You have the cemetery wall here, you know? Could they have just pulled up here and then, you know, shot him against this wall? Possibly. I mean, or maybe there was a lot here, but that doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, this is all fucking semantics. So when they come here, they end up shooting Jerry Morales and Charles Cannelstein. Now, Cannelstein would survive the shooting. Jerry Morales would not survive the shooting, unfortunately for him. So after that, these guys get hauled in on April 6th. They get caught. They find Billy Murtha, Coonan, and Sullivan at Murtha's apartment in their underwears hiding in the bathroom, two of them. The other one, Martha, is in the living room, I believe. And then later they catch up with Gallagher and they get his ass too. And since Cannelstein lives, he's able to go to court and identify the assailants. Sullivan, ex-con, big record, he's going to jail for life for this. Kona's gonna get a few years. He'll get a 5 to 10 for the assault, and he'll get it out in the early 70s. And then after that, I mean, you guys know the history after that. If you don't, I suggest you read the Westies. But once again, this is just some early history. So it would be right here with Billy Murtha, Jimmy Coonan, James Gallagher, and Eddie Sullivan came on the night of April 3rd. They brought Charles Connellstein and Jerry Morales, who was going by the name John Pucola at the time. They murdered Jerry Morales and thought they had took care of Callistein, 
this would not be the case. He would survive. After being abducted outside the Pussycat Lounge in Manhattan, this is where they ended up. And it just amazes me, you know, how young Coonan was at the time, 19 years old. I mean, you're talking about someone 19 years old. What were you doing at 19? I mean, were you involved in two murders within a couple of weeks? I mean, you know, just wild stuff, man. It was just a wild place, New York City at that time. Let's head up to this corner. And as wild as it was, it was only gonna get wilder. As you know, the history with the mob and all this stuff throughout the 70s and 80s, you know? It's not like anything was slowing down. Here we got some old uh, buildings over there, still holding on, very cool. Got this building here, looks like it's, uh, I don't know, about to be condemned, possibly. We'll take a look at it. I'd like to show you guys uh, the area. That's an old one. As you can see, this area is still kind of industrial. Not like the other area in Long Island City that we were in before. And uh, throwing a little trivia for you guys. You see that building right there in the distance? Straight ahead. That used to be the Citibank building. It's now been bought out and renamed something else. That was once the tallest building in Queens before they started building up all this stuff in Long Island City. I don't know what's the tallest building now, but I think probably one of those apartment buildings overtook it. Um, and oddly enough, you know, after they did 9-11, the terrorists, um, they had found in their files, like pictures of that building, you know? Cause they were thinking of, uh, you know, it's like a kind of like a, another one of those buildings that's like a big financial building and all that. So they were thinking like, Maybe they could use that as a potential target. But um, at that time, like I said, Long Island City, even 20 years ago, there wasn't a lot going on here. There wasn't that a big populace of people. So I guess the idea was that they figured that the death count wasn't going to be high enough for them. But that building right there, that big one, that was a potential target for the 9-11 terrorists. A little little history right there for you just a little fact and i'm sorry i don't know who bought that building out recently but it was the Citibank building for years forever now it's something else i can't even make out the writing and that's closer to where we were before a couple miles on the other side there but uh let's head back over to 37th street again We'll look down the block one more time. We're the night of April 3rd, 66. Just a couple of weeks after they take out Bobby Lagville, Jimmy Coonan and Sullivan is coming back to Long Island City. No Jackie this time. They got Billy Murtha and Gallagher. And they're gonna come over here. Fifth by in front of 5318. Where were that guy's walking right there? either a lot that supposedly was there or I'm gonna honestly guys I think it was against the cemetery wall here and the guy looked out the window and saw the bodies and he saw them get into the van into the sedan now something interesting that Candlestein said because he remembers because once again he survived he said that when they got in the car he heard a laugh like he's never heard before almost like uh like uh crazy hysterical laugh come from the car just like evil like some evil hyenas just cracking up screaming into the night thinking that what they did was a joke almost they just thought they killed two guys only one of them was killed you know so this is the sickness of these guys and you know 
this for Conan, I mean, this was just the beginning. I mean, of his reign of terror. So I don't know if these are considered Conan's first murders. I mean, I would assume he's only 19. You know, there were stories of him doing things before, getting into fights, slashing people up on the west side of Manhattan. But as far as murdering people, being involved in murders, you know, this is probably the first two, the Lagville that we were at, and then this one right here, the killing of Jerry Morales. And attempted murder of Stein. Starting young, 19, huh? Oof. So, let's get a look down this block once again. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thirty Seventh Street, Long Island City. Let's head back up here. All right, so I'm gonna end this. You know, a couple of people had asked me to do some Westie stuff, and uh, I thought this was a cool idea because it's some early history, and uh, I didn't have to go into Manhattan. I mean, I'll get into Manhattan at some point. I'll get over to the west side. We'll check out those locations, kind of the uh, later Westies years, you know, the 70s into the 80s and stuff like that. But I like this little early stuff. It's kind of cool. And it's interesting because, you know, I grew up in Queens, not this part of Queens, but it's always cool to know some of the borough's history, some of this criminal history. And I hope the stories were clear. And if they weren't clear enough, I apologize. But I suggest you read the Westies book to get a better picture of this stuff. It's one of the best crime books ever written as far as covering a uh, criminal organization or a gang which is what the Westies were and Coonan and them so alright I hope everyone has a great week hope you enjoyed this let's go out on the Freedom Tower